in Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons, looks like we've got a new ranger subclass to talk about. I guess it's time to talk about the Drake Warden from Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons for 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. I'm Nerdarchist Ted. I'm Nerdarchist Dave. Welcome to Nerdarchy. For nerds, by nerds. Let's grab a Drake and head on into this video. All right. So as always, we have our little quip from Fizzban. They say that rangers tend to look a lot like their bestial companions. That makes Drake Wardens among the most attractive of humanoids. Fizzban. I feel like Fizzban is a bit biased, to be honest with you. I, I think he likes dragons and draconic things. So, uh, I mean, if you look like your companion and you like dragons, then it totally makes sense. Your connection to the natural world takes the form of a draconic spirit, which can manifest in physical form as a drake. As your powers grow, your drake grows as well, blossoming from a small four-legged companion to a majestic winged creature large and strong enough for you to ride. Along the way, you gain an increasing share of the all-inspiring power of dragons. Consider the source of draconic spirit you have bonded with. The Drake Warden Origin Table offers examples. You studied a dragon scout or claw or a trinket from a dragon sword, creating your bond through the token's lingering draconic magic. A secret order of rangers who collects and guards draconic lore taught you their ways. A dragon gave you a uh, geode or gemstone to care for. To your surprise, the, the drake hatched from the stone. You ingested a few drops of dragon blood, forever infusing your nature magic with draconic power. An ancient draconic inscription on a standing stone empowered you when you read it aloud. You had a vivid dream of a mysterious figure accompanied by seven yellow canaries who warned you of impending doom. When you awoke, your drake was there watching you. So there's some cool options there to either choose from or inspire your own, um, you know, who doesn't want a little dragon buddy when they're playing D and D as a ranger? I just find this, you know, you know, oh, you you got something from a dragon's horde at third level. How did that happen? <laughs> it just <laughs> fell into your hands. You found it. So maybe the dragon gave it to you. Like that. That seems more likely. And you're kind of in tune with dragons and like your boys, sort of. Uh, so I think that's kind of how it happens. But anyway. Uh, real quick, you know, you notice we've got these cool Fizzbands Treasury of Dragon books in our hands. If you're familiar with the channel, uh, you probably know what that means. If not, I'm going to let you know. If you happen to be a subscriber to our newsletter, there's a link in the description. Or one of our patrons, also a link in the description. We do monthly giveaways. Uh, these will end up in the giveaway piles. We got a handful of them, including at least one special cover that we'll be giving away in the very near future. So if you're interested in that, you might want to check it out. But also, you can't wait till then. No problem. We're going to put an affiliate link to Amazon down in the description so you can pre-order your copy today or order your copy today. And, uh, you know, the, it's an affiliate link. So that means, you know, it helps out the channel. Uh, we earn a small commission every time you buy using that link. So uh, go check it out. But if you're looking for another way that you want to help support the channel to keep making videos like this, as well as all of the awesome co content over on nerdarchy.com, why not check us out over on Patreon and support us there? As a special thank you, you'll receive 5e content for both DMs and players alike. We're making classes, subclasses, feats, spells, magic items. Sometimes we turn those into print and play cards, drop in encounters. Uh, we, there's even a chance to gain with Nerdarchy. So there's all kinds of great benefits over there. And we have a free sampler that you can check out in the link in the description below or one of these cards up here. Go click stuff and see if you want to help your help your nerds out. All right, so we're going to dive on in to the Drake Warden. Draconic Gift. At third level, uh, the first thing you receive is the bond you share with your, your Drake creates a connection to dragon kind, granting you an understanding and empowering your presence, gain the following benefits. Thermaturgy, you learn the Thermaturgy cantrip, which is a ranger spell for you. Tongue of the Dragons, you learn to speak, read, and write Draconic or one other language of your choice. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty pretty nice. You know, ran rangers getting a cantrip is uh, always a always a cool thing. Uh, and then you know, just like we had talked about with the the previous video, when we talked about monks, is you know, getting either draconic or a language of your choice definitely makes you more draconic because it allows you to interact more with the world around you. Uh, but it also at third level, you're going to get a Drake companion. As an action, you can magically summon the drake that is bound to you. It appears in unoccupied space within 30 feet. It's friendly to you and your companions, and it obeys your commands. You know, see the, the the drake companion stat block, which you know 
uses your proficiency bonus. Whenever you summon the, the Drake, choose a damage type listed in the Draconic Essence trait. You can determine the cosmetic characteristics of the Drake, such as color, its scale texture, or any visible effect of its Draconic Essence. Your choice has no effect on its game stats. In combat, the Drake shares your initiative count, but it takes its turn immediately after yours. It can move and use its reaction on its own, but only action it can take on its turn is to dodge, unless you take a bonus action on your turn to command it or to take another action. That action can be one in the stat block or some other action. If you're incapacitated, the Drake can take any action of its choice, not just dodge. And then we get the, the Dragon Companion. It's a small dragon. It's got a good armor class, 14 plus your proficiency bonus. Hit points is five plus five times your ranger level. Um, speed, 40 feet. It's got, it's got fairly decent stats. It's good saves or dex and wisdom. It has immunity depending on what essence trait you choose. It does speak a language. Draconic makes sense. Draconic essence. This is kind of the important part. When you summon the Drake, choose a damage type. Ask a cold fire, lightning, and poison. The chosen type determines the Drake's damage immunity and the damage of its infused strike trait. It gets a bite attack. Um, and as a reaction, infused strikes. When another creature within 30 feet of the Drake that you can see hits the target with a weapon attack. The Drake infuses the strike with its essence, causing the target to take an extra D6 damage to the type determined by the Dragonic Essence. This is super cool because like, you can buff yourself, the Drake, or anyone in your party that hits with a weapon attack. And a Drake remains until it reduced to zero hit points until you use this feature to summon the Drake again or until you die. Anything the Drake was wearing or carrying is left behind when the drake vanishes. And once you summon the drake, you can't do so until you finish a long rest until you expend a spell slot of first level or higher to summon it. So I think this is different than the Unearth Arcana version because I think there was a duration. Mm -hmm. It was like in hours, right. and, but, and then you'd have to resummon it again. This is you summon it once a day and it stays until it basically gets killed and then you gotta wait or cast a spell. So the the thing that I that I like here is, all right, I summon it today. I can go into combat with it tomorrow, and if it gets you know in you know injured, damaged, or destroyed, I can use an action to call it call it again because I've finished a long rest without expending a spell slot. You know, so like you can, I don't want to say exploit, but you can definitely like oh instead of having to heal it and mm -hmm. use use resources, you can just call forth it again. And have have that restore the hit points, and then you know go from there. Well, kind of the point too of having this dragon companion is having it right. Right. So they they are trying. I feel like they're trying to make it so it's as easy as possible without just saying it's there all the time. <laughs> and again, too, like with all the creatures, they're always summon creatures now because they don't want to have to deal with the fact that if it actually dies then you have to get a new one, a different one. Or, and... or you have to have it resurrected and trained. Uh, it, it's it, it's weird, but I understand the, the methodology behind it. Like, yeah, mechanically, there, there's a reason for it. So at 7th level, we get Bond of Fang and Scale. The bond you share with your Drake intensifies protecting you and strength. Stoking the dragon or the Drake's fury when you summon your Drake. It grows wings on its back and gains a fly speed equal to a walking speed. In addition, while your Drake is summoned, you and the Drake gain the following benefits. The Drake uh, Drake mount. The Drake grows to medium size, reflecting your special bond. You can use the Drake as a mount if your size medium or smaller. While you're riding your Drake, it can't use the fly speed uh, of this feature. Magic Fang, the Drake's bite attack deals an extra die six damage of type chosen for the Drake's Draconic Essence resistance. You gain resistance to damage type chosen for the Drake's Draconic Essence. So you get resistance, it does more damage, and now you can use it as a mount. And, oh, by the way, it also flies. You just can't use it as a mount while it's flying. Yet. <laughs> Yet. Uh, so we also get Drake's Breath at 11th level. As an action, you can exhale a 30-foot cone of damaging breath or cause your Drake to exhale it. Choose Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Poison damage. Your, your choice doesn't have to match the Drake's Draconic Essence. Each creature in the cone must make a dex save against your spell save DC, taking 8 die 6 damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one, and the damage increases to 10 die 6 at 15th level. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest, or spend a 3rd level spell slot. Again, we've mentioned time and time again, we like that when you have a finite resource um, that you just get, but then also you have other resources that you can expend to continue doing it. 
if that's what you want to do. Um, and you know, the great thing about this particular subclass is it still works fairly well with Hunter's Mark, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's going to be a little bit of an issue when you're sw swapping out your mark from one creature to another or casting a spell. But once it's there, you're not hindered the way like the Beast Companion was originally. It got better with um, Tasha's. They kind of fixed it and made it more useful. Uh, but all in all, like so far, I'm really digging this one. So 15th level, we get our capstone ability, Perfected Bond. Your bond to your drake reaches the pinnacle of its power. While your drake is summoned, you and the drake gain the following benefits. Empower Bite. The drake's bite attack deals an extra die six of the type chosen for its uh, draconic essence. So a total of two die six, plus it gets a die six, so that's three die six and technically it can add another die six depending who's doing doing the hitting and where you want to use that infused strike plus your proficiency bonus plus, yeah plus your proficiency bonus it's a large rake the drake grows to large size when you ride your drake it is no longer prohibited from using the flying speed of bond of fang and scale so now you have a flying mount uh, reflexive resistance when either you or the drake takes damage while you're within 30 feet of each other you can use a reaction to give yourself or the drake resistance to the instance of damage you can use this reaction a number of times equal to proficiency bonus and you gain all expended uses when you finish a long rest so at this point you're at like five or six times a day pretty much that you can use it so you're going to mitigate damage on you know either your drake or yourself um, and also like it's a nice suite of abilities and i feel like the kind of like the underpowered subclasses, like that's kind of the fix that they've been going with is like, oh, well, at these levels, you get a bunch of things instead. Right. Uh, and they're kind of like mixing and matching. But uh, this definitely helps. So I, I definitely dig this. Uh, and I feel that there's not enough mount oriented classes within, you know, fifth edition. It's yeah, typically that is kind of relegated towards Paladin. Uh, but I like to see it in Rangers and, you know, there's there's a handful of, of characters that I've seen made where like, oh, well, I'm going to get a companion, so I'm going to be smaller so I can ride this thing. Yeah. And here you aren't relegated to that. Yeah, you do have to wait until the higher levels, but it's worth the payoff to be like, all right, you know, here's here's this thing that I've. Oh, did you did you hatch it and it and it actually grow in front of you? Uh, you know, or has this thing been with you for all this time and now it's it's just large and and in charge? Yeah, it's you know, it's definitely a better beast companion than the original beast companion, and it's pretty much on par with the ones you get options for in, in Tasha's. And but then also the other things in the in the class itself kind of makes it slightly better than the the Beastmaster Ranger, which again, you know, in the thing that they're not going to be calling 5.5, that's probably one of the issues I imagine they're going to address right? Uh, to bring like all these classes in line. And so they work similarly. So all in all, I think there's, there's, there's a lot going on uh, with this. I don't think there's anything that I feel I've got any issue with. It's thematic. It's fun. I'm interested in playing one for sure. You get to be, you get dragon pets, you get to breathe like a dragon, your dragon can breathe like a dragon. Uh, there's a lot of fun things going in, on in there. I feel like it covers the different pillars of the game for sure. And, and it's, and it's got that, you know, that kind of back and forth abilities where like you both can do things to help each other out. And yeah. like, that that that's what teamwork is right right yeah i mean I, I would say the only like tricky part about a class like this is uh at 15th level when it becomes large like being large can cause issues in the dungeon per se right but uh like that's the only thing i see but yeah that's the trade-off for having a cool big dragon thing that gets to hang out with you <laughs> It's like, okay, well, you know, there could be times where you have to leave it behind while you try to, you know, squeeze your way into something. But once you get on the other side, it's a first level spell slot. Just drop it. Yeah, know. yeah. Or, you know, either that or stock up on potions reduce, <laughs> <laughs> as the case may be. At 15th level, if, if your DM is creating those kinds of things, then that's a creative way to, to get around it. You, you, need, you make friends with the alchemist in the party for sure. <laughs> Uh, the artificer. Well, let us know what you think. You know, how do you feel about it? Does everybody in your group now want a dragon buddy, uh, it, it, you know, to adventure with? Uh, share your thoughts and ideas down below in the comments with the Nerdarchy community.
while you're down there, don't forget to do all those fun things like like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. Quick reminder, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we drop new videos over on the channel here. But hey, you can't wait till then, no problem. We got you covered. Do you want to know about another draconic subclass? Well, we have a way of the ascendant dragon up here. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.